Today we're joined by Sarah Mitchell, a 42-year-old former high school teacher from Colorado. Sarah, your story has deeply affected me since I first heard it. Before we begin, I want our viewers to know what you're about to share. It changed how I view the spiritual world around us. Thank you for having me. What I experienced wasn't just a near-death experience. It was a divine appointment. Jesus showed me things that have shaken me to my core, things that every Christian needs to know. You know, I've interviewed many people with near-death experiences, but something about your story feels different. Can you take us through what happened that day? It was December 12, 2023. I was driving home from our school's Christmas concert around 8.30 p.m. The snow was coming down heavily, and I remember thinking I should have stayed at a colleague's house until the storm passed. I was about five miles from home when it happened. I was going around a curve, doing maybe 25 miles per hour because of the weather. That's when I saw the headlights. A semi-truck had jackknifed on the ice and was sliding straight toward me. I remember screaming Jesus' name, then everything went black. The impact was devastating. The paramedics later told me that my car was crushed like a tin can. They had to use the jaws of life to get me out. My body was broken, fractured skull, punctured lung, internal bleeding, broken ribs, crushed pelvis. But what happened next, that's what people need to hear. I've seen the photos of your car. The fact that you're sitting here today is already a miracle. Can you describe what happened when your spirit left your body? Everything was perfectly clear. My spirit slipped out so gently, like sliding out of a tight jacket. Suddenly, I was floating above the crash scene, watching everything. I could see my broken body in the wreckage, blood everywhere. The paramedics were working frantically, doing chest compressions. Then I started moving upward, faster and faster. I passed through what felt like layers of reality. Each layer revealed more of the spiritual realm. The physical world fell away, and I entered what I can only describe as pure spirit. The colors there don't exist on earth. The air itself seemed alive with divine energy. That's when I saw him. Jesus. His presence was overwhelming. The love radiating from him was more powerful than anything I've ever experienced. He looked at me with such deep compassion, but also urgency. Can you describe Jesus' appearance? His eyes? They were like flames of love. They seemed to contain all the wisdom of the universe. His face shone brighter than the sun, but I could look at him without being blinded. He wore robes of pure white light that seemed to be made of living energy. But it was his presence that truly struck me, absolute holiness mixed with absolute love. What did Jesus say to you? He said, I have chosen you to witness what the enemy has done to deceive my people. You must return and warn them. The deception is deeper than most realize. Deeper than most realize? What do you mean? What happened next? Jesus took my hand, and suddenly we were in what I can only describe as a spiritual viewing room. Jesus showed me how these symbols don't just represent evil, they actually function as spiritual technology. He said, watch carefully. I will show you how the enemy has woven his deception into the fabric of your world through symbols that appear innocent but carry dark power. I notice you're trembling as you say this. What did he show you first? The first vision he showed me was about the peace sign. But before Jesus showed me the symbol itself, he revealed something crucial, how demons actually interact with symbols in the spiritual realm. I saw how they use these marks as what I can only describe as spiritual antennas, points of resonance that allow them to broadcast their influence into our physical world. That's fascinating, and terrifying. Can you be more specific about what you saw with the peace sign? Jesus took me through time. I witnessed Emperor Nero's persecution of Christians, but I saw it from both the physical and spiritual perspective simultaneously. In the physical realm, I saw the broken cross being used to mock Christians. But in the spiritual realm, God, this is hard to describe. I saw demons actually weaving dark energy into the symbol's pattern. They were creating what Jesus called a spiritual frequency that would resonate through time. Through time? How is that possible? Jesus explained that certain geometric patterns, when charged with spiritual energy, can maintain their power across centuries. He showed me how the peace sign appears in three main variations today, the classic design, 
the simplified version often used in art, and what he called the hidden form, where it's incorporated into other designs so subtly that most people miss it. You can find these variations everywhere, jewelry, especially pendants and rings, clothing, particularly in youth fashion, corporate logos, especially in the entertainment industry, school supplies, phone cases, even church decorations sometimes. I'm stunned. I actually have a peace sign on my phone case. I had no idea. What exactly happens spiritually when someone wears or displays the symbol? Jesus showed me three levels of spiritual impact. The first level is subtle, it creates what he called a spiritual static, making it harder to hear the Holy Spirit. The second level is more serious, it establishes what he called permission points where demons can begin influencing thoughts and emotions. The third level, this is what I saw happening to people who had deep, long-term exposure to the symbol. Please, go on. Our viewers need to hear this. At the third level, the symbol actually creates what Jesus called a spiritual blind spot, a specific inability to discern certain types of spiritual deception. I saw people who were otherwise strong Christians completely unable to recognize obvious demonic influence in their lives because this blind spot had developed. This is heavier than anything I've covered in my 15 years of religious broadcasting. What about the ank? Did Jesus show you similar patterns with that symbol? The ank was even more disturbing. Jesus showed me how it functions as what he called a spiritual transmitter. In ancient Egypt, I saw how priests would use it to channel specific types of demonic entities. But what horrified me was seeing how these same demons are still attached to the symbol today. Let me give you a practical example, Jesus showed me a typical shopping mall. In the spiritual realm, I could see ank jewelry creating what looked like tiny portals, points where demonic entities could actually reach through and influence the physical world. These demons specifically target our understanding of eternal life, creating confusion about salvation and promoting false spiritual experiences. How can people identify ank influences in their lives? I'm sure many viewers are wondering right now. The ank appears most commonly as jewelry, especially necklaces and earrings. But Jesus showed me how it's also hidden in modern designs, stylized crosses that incorporate the loop at the top, decorative elements in home decor, especially Egyptian-themed items, tattoo designs where it's woven into larger patterns, and even in some Christian bookstore items where it's mistakenly used as an alternative cross design. You mentioned demons specifically targeting our understanding of eternal life. Can you elaborate on that? Jesus showed me how these demons work in stages. First, they create a fascination with Egyptian spirituality, making it seem exotic and harmless. Then they gradually shift a person's thinking about eternal life away from Christ and toward universal concepts of immortality. Finally, they create what Jesus called spiritual counterfeits, experiences that feel genuinely spiritual but actually lead people away from true salvation. I saw people who died wearing the ank. Their spirits were confused, unable to recognize Jesus because the symbol had clouded their spiritual vision with false concepts of eternity. I need to ask about the sigils, they seem less common than these other symbols, but you mentioned they're actually more dangerous? Yes, and Jesus showed me why. Sigils are like spiritual computer code, each line and curve is actually a programming element in the spiritual realm. When someone draws a sigil, even without understanding what they're doing, they're actually writing a program that demons can execute. Jesus showed me how sigils appear in modern life, in corporate logos disguised as abstract designs, in popular tattoo patterns where they're hidden in artistic elements, in jewelry marketed as sacred geometry, and even in some modern church logos where designers unknowingly incorporated sigil elements. The most dangerous part is how they're spreading through social media, people sharing manifestation symbols or protection sigils without realizing they're actually creating doorways for demonic influence. How can our viewers protect themselves? How do they identify these hidden sigils? Jesus showed me specific warning signs, repeated geometric patterns that seem to draw your eye unnaturally, designs that combine letters or symbols in ways that create new shapes, anything marketed as having manifestation or attraction properties, 
and especially any symbol that people claim you need to activate through meditation or intention. But here's the crucial part, Jesus showed me how to test any symbol, if you feel a strange attachment to it, if you feel resistant to removing it, or if you find yourself defending it despite learning about its spiritual dangers, those are all signs of demonic attachment. Let's talk about the Eye of Horus. Many people think it's just an ancient Egyptian design, but you saw something very different, didn't you? The Eye of Horus is what Jesus called a master symbol, it's one of Satan's most sophisticated tools. In the spiritual realm, I saw how it functions like a spiritual surveillance device, creating a two-way conduit for demonic observation and influence. Jesus showed me how it appears today, in obvious forms like jewelry and decorative items, in simplified versions in corporate logos, especially media companies, hidden in makeup designs, particularly eye makeup, and even in architectural elements where it's disguised as decorative patterns. The most disturbing thing Jesus showed me was how this symbol affects the pineal gland, what some call the third eye. When people wear or display this symbol, it creates a physical change in their brain that makes them more susceptible to demonic influence. I saw people who had died after years of exposure to this symbol, their spirits were so tuned to demonic frequencies that they couldn't even perceive Christ's presence. I have to admit, I'm feeling convicted right now. I just remembered I have a decorative plate with this symbol in my kitchen. I thought it was just a cute Egyptian design. That's exactly how the enemy works, making these symbols seem harmless or even attractive. Jesus showed me how demons use the Eye of Horus to establish what he called surveillance networks in homes. Each instance of the symbol becomes like a spiritual security camera, allowing demons to monitor and influence the spiritual atmosphere of the space. Tell us about the Euroboros, the serpent eating its tail. What did Jesus reveal about this symbol? The Euroboros is Satan's counterfeit of eternal life. Jesus showed me how this symbol creates a spiritual prison, a closed loop that traps people in cycles of deception. In the spiritual realm, it looks like a spiritual straitjacket, binding people's discernment and understanding. You'll find it in New Age jewelry, in dragon-themed decorations, in corporate logos, especially in the technology and pharmaceutical industries, and in academic symbols, particularly in scientific fields. It's often disguised as a circle or spiral design. Jesus showed me people who had this symbol tattooed on their bodies. In the spiritual realm, their spirits were literally bound by serpentine coils, making it nearly impossible for them to break free from deceptive belief systems. And finally, the horned hand gesture. I see this at concerts all the time, people think it just means rock on. That's exactly what the enemy wants people to think. Jesus showed me how this gesture actually creates a spiritual antenna that broadcasts directly to demonic realms. When someone makes this sign, even as a joke, it sends out a spiritual signal that demons can lock onto. I saw concert crowds making this gesture by the thousands. In the spiritual realm, it looked like a forest of demonic antennas, creating a massive portal that allowed demons to sweep through the crowd, attaching themselves to people. The gesture appears in, music performances and concerts, sports events, social media photos, school pictures, and even in seemingly innocent contexts like Halloween costumes or playful photos. This is overwhelming. What should people do if they recognize these symbols in their lives? First, get rid of these symbols immediately. Don't sell them, destroy them. When you remove them, pray and renounce any spiritual authority you may have given to the enemy through them. Ask Jesus to close any spiritual doors these symbols may have opened in your life. Second, educate yourself and your family. These symbols are everywhere, and Satan is constantly introducing new ones. We need to be vigilant and discerning. Third, if you've had these symbols in your home, I recommend doing a thorough prayer cleansing of your space. The spiritual attachments these symbols create can linger even after the symbols are gone. Most importantly, draw close to Jesus. The closer you are to his light, the easier it is to spot the enemy's deceptions. What about digital images? So many of these symbols appear on our phones and computers. Yes, Jesus showed me how even digital representations can create spiritual frequencies. 
Delete images containing these symbols from your devices. Unfollow social media accounts that regularly post them. Be especially careful with profile pictures and backgrounds. For those who've had long-term exposure to these symbols, Jesus recommended a specific prayer of renunciation and cleansing. He showed me that the spiritual attachments these symbols create can linger even after the symbols are gone, like spiritual residue. Can you share that prayer with our viewers? Of course. Jesus gave me this specific prayer. Lord Jesus, I renounce any spiritual influence or authority I may have given to the enemy through these symbols. I break every spiritual attachment, contract, or permission point created through my interaction with these symbols. By your blood, I claim back any spiritual ground I may have surrendered. Holy Spirit, reveal to me any hidden symbols or spiritual attachments that need to be addressed. I choose now to align myself only with your truth and your symbols of genuine faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. How did Jesus explain the importance of removing these symbols from our lives? Jesus showed me that these symbols act like spiritual magnets, drawing demons not just to individuals but to entire households. I saw homes where these symbols were present, in artwork, jewelry, children's toys, even corporate logos on products. These houses were literally surrounded by dark entities that had gained access through these symbols. He showed me how each symbol creates a different type of spiritual vulnerability. The peace sign weakens our spiritual discernment. The ink distorts our understanding of true eternal life. Sigils create permanent tears in our spiritual protection. The Eye of Horus opens us to false spiritual guidance. The Euroboros traps us in cycles of deception. And the Horned Hand creates direct demonic attachments. Jesus showed me people who had died without removing these symbols from their lives. I saw how the demons attached to these symbols fought to keep their souls confused and disoriented during the transition from life to death, making it harder for them to recognize and reach out to Christ. Some souls were so weighed down by these attachments that they couldn't rise to meet Jesus, even when he was right there calling to them. How did it end? What happened when you returned to your body? Jesus held me one last time and said, Tell them, my daughter. Tell them that these are not just symbols, they are keys that the enemy uses to unlock doors that should stay closed. Tell them that their eternal souls are at stake. Then suddenly, I was back in my body, gasping as the paramedics successfully resuscitated me. They called it a miracle, my injuries should have been fatal. But I know why I was sent back. I have to share this warning. The doctors were amazed by my recovery. Most of my injuries healed far faster than they expected. But I came back changed. I can still see things sometimes, glimpses of the spiritual realm. I can see how these symbols affect people's spiritual lives. It's like having eternal night vision goggles. Have you experienced any backlash from sharing your testimony? Of course. I've been called crazy, religious extremist, fanatic, you name it. I've lost friends. Some family members won't talk to me. But after what Jesus showed me, I can't worry about that. These symbols are literally killing people spiritually. How could I stay silent? I know some people watching this will think I'm crazy or excessive. But I'm telling you what I saw with my own eyes in the spiritual realm. These symbols have real power, and they're destroying lives and souls. The time for playing around with them is over. We need to wake up and recognize the spiritual warfare that's happening right under our noses. What changes did you make in your own life after this experience? I went through my entire house with new eyes. I found these symbols everywhere, jewelry I thought was innocent, decorative items I thought were just pretty, even some of my students' artwork I had displayed. I got rid of everything. I also started really studying my Bible, especially the verses about spiritual warfare and discernment. Jesus showed me that these symbols are mentioned indirectly in scripture, they're part of what Paul calls the schemes of the devil. But the biggest change is that I can't stay silent. When I see people wearing or displaying these symbols, I see what Jesus showed me. I know what's attached to them in the spiritual realm. It would be unloving of me not to warn them. I know sharing this testimony hasn't been easy. What final message would you like to leave with our viewers? Jesus told me. Tell them that these are not just symbols, they are keys that the enemy uses to unlock doors that should stay closed. 
Tell them that their eternal souls are at stake. Don't wait to remove these symbols from your life. I've seen what happens to souls who die with these spiritual attachments in place. It's not worth the risk. Jesus loves you too much to leave you in deception. That's why he showed me these things. Remember, Satan's greatest trick isn't convincing people he doesn't exist. It's convincing them that obviously demonic symbols are harmless or even positive. Don't fall for it. Your eternal soul is too precious to risk.